Frogs in boiling water, that's how Seth Klarman describes investors today, conditioned not to feel fear. Just like with the money GPS, he blames the Fed directly. The trouble here is that the Fed is actually unable to stop a crisis, would never stop a crisis, and in fact creates a crisis in the first place. But they have been conditioned to believe otherwise, so that's the consensus. The truth doesn't matter to most only herd mentality. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Yes, strong words, but that's what you get here at the Money GPS. Today, we're going to talk about the broken market. I'm going to look at statistically what has been happening, going to show you what the individuals like Seth Klarman had to say. I got the Financial Times up on here. I got a lot of charts as well, so definitely stay tuned. Let's go. Seth Klarman compares investors to frogs in boiling water. Value investing guru says the Federal Reserve has broken the stock market. Further along in here, you can see exactly what he had to say. Seth Klarman, the founder of Hedge Fund, Bow Pulse Group, has told clients central bank policies and government stimulus have convinced investors that risk has simply vanished, leaving the market and unable to fulfill its role as a price discovery mechanism. This is something I just talked about, and here we are now seeing Seth Klarman talk about the same thing. It is important to see what's happening with all of these different metrics, these indicators, because that gives you a sense of what's happening. I use the example, the analogy of why if you put your hand in the fire, why does it hurt? You know, you can't just, let's say, take a pill and remove that pain and you'll be able to keep your hand in the fire. No, your hand is going to burn off. That's the way you should look at it. But today, the Federal Reserve has turned off that simple mechanism. And there you go. You keep your hand in the fire. See what happens. The private letter to investors in his fund amounts to damning critique of the market behavior by one of the world's foremost value investors. Now, of course, there had been a change more recently moving out of the growth stocks more into those values. So we'll see what happens to the fund. The fund is something like $30 billion or something I read. So it's definitely uh, very large. And out here, he says, with so much stimulus being deployed, trying to figure out if the economy is in recession, it's like trying to assess if you've ever had a fever after you just took a large dose of aspirin. But as with the frogs in water that is slowly being heated to a boil, investors are being conditioned not to recognize the danger. Very, very accurate right here. Quote, the biggest problem with these unprecedented and sustained government and central bank interventions is that the risks to capital become masked even as they mount. Of course, this is what they're doing. And obviously, they don't care about the average person. They don't care about what the effects are. They're doing this for a reason. They are creating a massive problem bubble. They do this every time. Look, you had the words irrational exuberance uttered by Alan Greenspan. And what happened? Years and years and years of irrational exuberance. Look, Mr. Klarman also said that the Fed's policies have exacerbated economic inequality, referring to the K-shaped recovery, something that we talk about numerous times here, where a certain group of people are able to benefit from these policies. The fortunes of those already at the top bounding swiftly upward, while those at the bottom remain on a down slope with out end. Looking at Tesla, he mentions uh, with that, barely profitable and so on right here. The more distant the eventual payoff, the more the present value rises. When it comes to the value of cash flows, the vast and limitless future yet to unfold has gained considerable ground on the more firmly anchored present. The Fed's policies and programs, this is, this is good right here, have directly contributed to exceptionally benign market conditions where nearly everything is bid up while downside volatility is truncated. In this part, the market's usual role in price discovery has effectively been suspended. Suspended right there. And that is not a good thing. I know that so many people believe, look, now the Fed's in charge. As long as they keep printing, we don't have to worry. And that's not true. Of course, you always have to be concerned. They turned off the pain indicator. So your hand's in the fire and you think that everything's okay. But certainly it's burning. It's hurting. You've got to be paying attention. You got to not look away. You got to look at it directly and see what you're doing. You've got your hand in that fire. So you got to be careful. That's the whole point. 
This is out of Bloomberg and it's showing you the 100 stocks in the S&P 500 with the highest P.E. ratios based on expected 2021 earnings. This purple area would represent stock in the S&P value index and then yellow is not in the value index. And the P.E. ratio right here is, for those who can't see, 50 this is 250, and so you could see where they're all at. Now, Tesla being right here, according to them at this time, just showing you that the share prices is up about 700% from a year ago, and it's hard to tell exactly where, but it's coming close to 200 on that PE ratio. You could see Amazon looking very, very frothy as far as I'm concerned, and it just goes on and on. If you wanna check this out, you, you can do so. All I'm trying to highlight here is that when we look at what's going on, not just with the P.E. ratio as a whole, like all of them together with the S&P 500, you look at many, many of the big names and it's gone out of this world. SPAC rush leads to, uh, active ETF to go all in on blank check firms. We are seeing this over and over again. And actually, it's not a bad idea when you just pour all of this money in and you know that the whole thing if you just attach the word SPAC you are going to have a massive amount of cash flood in they then go out there buy something who knows if it's profitable whatever it might be that's all good because it's got the word SPAC on it and therefore you will see some profits I mean who knows what happens in the end because nobody even knows what this is all about but you know SPAC sounds pretty interesting right out of Bloomberg on the potential pain trade for 2021. Funny enough, I think the big pain trade for a lot of people on the buy side is a recovery or a strong recovery because many people haven't traded in a post-recessionary environment. Many people have been trading in a low growth or recessionary environment. And when growth is abundant, different things happen. The market rewards value in small caps and cyclicals, and that could cause a lot of pain for much of the buy side because they're so steeped in that growth trade. So I want to see if we do see a bunch of change in that money moving out of the growth stocks into those the value side uh, i want to know what's going to happen here 2021 or is there going to be something else altogether i will keep you up to date on those stats of course it is very clear though that hedge funds beef up tech holdings before apple and amazon earnings they know what's happening obviously these big companies have seen so much money flood into them throughout 2020 and here into 2021 that you know some of them some of these tech stocks have kind of been trading in a range for a period and it, it remains to be seen what will happen this year at least for the first little bit but the direction they believe is far far higher than where it is today only time will tell in an absolutely ridiculous bit of information check this out we are entering a phase where the market needs constant affirmation that the fed is committed to not tapering that's because of growing optimism on the fiscal side which is raising the risks that the economy may rebound more quickly than expected oh that's right you know you're looking at an unemployment rate the last time i checked i don't even know what it is right now u3 unemployment rate in the u.s 6.7 percent that is close to their five percent number which is considered to be full employment you also have millions and millions of people who are currently out of work you got food stamps which the last time i checked were 40 plus million 40 plus million and supposedly over 10 more million will be added to that number so it's going to be well well over 50 million people in the United States that are on the food stamp program. You've got some wacky stats. Nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. You're talking about near full employment. At the same time, 50 million people are on food stamps. Look how many people are on some sort of assistance program today that weren't on it, you know, let's say around a year ago. They weren't even in existence a year ago. And now suddenly people are living on these things. You've got the moratoriums on all of the evictions. What about the rent? What about the mortgages? Just push back, push back, push back further. And at the same time, they're telling you this is the best recovery, the fastest recovery that they 
they have ever seen. Nothing makes sense. Why are they printing? I'll ask this over and over and over again. Why are they printing? Why are they doing the fiscal programs? Why are they stimulus pumping on all and every different angle when you're telling me that the unemployment rate is 6.7%, that everything's being taken care of, and that it has never looked better? Something doesn't add up. I just wanted to show you this, give you an update on what's happening with Argentina. You know, I had been covering this the entire time. I had seen, look, you have to understand the Argentine peso was on par with the United States dollar at one point. And then there's some devaluation, certainly. And you see through the years, this chart, by the way, goes from the 90s up until the present. And you could see, you know, it, it is coming down. It is weakening as time goes on. But as we move into, let's say, 2014 or so, you could see that it's starting to get hit. You could see at this point it started to get weak. But it's not until, you know, that's got to be 2016, 2017 where it starts to fall off this cliff and it gets worse and worse. And I talked about it around that time. I remember I was doing videos about it saying this currency is going to get weaker. It's going to be destroyed. And you could see today, 86, 86. It goes from one to one now to 86. And this is not looking good. I had people denying what was happening, that everything's going to be okay. That is no problem. But clearly it isn't. And of course, the people, the people suffer when these devaluations occur. Yeah, that might be good for exports. But at the same time, I mean, you're talking about, you know, slight variations, not when it's completely devalued like this. 86. This isn't good for Argentina. And that is truly truly unfortunate all right so check this out really quickly want to move through these i got two for you that discuss what's happening with the migration and you could see state population growth slows 16 states lost population between 2019 and mid 2020 amid the biggest national growth slowdown since the 1930s the red areas that's where there was population growth and you could see the blue that's where you had uh in the negative territory and it just gives you an idea of where people are moving in into where they're moving out of and it is very clear you're looking at areas that we've talked about before nothing new here i just wanted to give you it because they showed the map it is interesting to see that you've got places like texas like florida they're getting those population growth and then you look at places like california new york people are leaving this just gives you an idea of the top outbound states, top inbound states, those percentages there for those who are wondering what that is. The above numbers are an, on, a, on a percentage basis of inbound to outbound moves, not absolute numbers. So you look at the top outbound, it's everything you expect, Illinois, New York, California, New Jersey, Maryland, and inbound, Idaho, Arizona, South Carolina, Tennessee, North Carolina, and of course you go down the list as well. It just gives you some insight as to what is happening, and then you look at the policy season you look at the actions that are happening in in these areas and i think it makes a lot of sense gas tax hike is on the table during a confirmation hearing they discussed this and i think it's pretty clear they did make the point that the tax apparently hadn't been hiked since 1993 it hasn't been adjusted for inflation at all so it's due for that i mean come on they're going to increase taxes in every which way possible we know that is the trend we know that individuals will not be able to hold on to as much of their income as they had previously and previous to that and previous to that that's why actual real incomes are falling but nobody wants to talk about it and they simply want to discuss how we can invest in the next amazon or the next uber or whatever and meanwhile if we would only see that you know that ball and chain that's attached there big government this is what they want this is what they'll get that's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button if you want to support me. If you hate me, you can actually support me as well by giving me the thumbs down. I appreciate that as well. If you want to learn about e-commerce, you actually want to learn for free. I, I give this course away for free. It's available at the amazongps.com. If you want to know about the financial system top to bottom, talking about central banks, interest rates, everything you need to know is in these two. Check it out at the link in the description. But if you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out because i talk about that issue i was discussing earlier so it'll be a direct connection to that definitely click it i'll see you there